Now, I, I love how now that our minds have been awakened to this thing, to this choice uh, uh, for life, no matter where we are, no matter what we're reading, I mean, every time I, I, I tune in to Sunday school, no matter what, it's there. We, we, we are, we are, our eyes are open to the fact that God has, has only had two choices for his people. And no matter how you say them, no matter what they are, it turns out it's either the life or death. I heard somebody saying today it was the narrow road or the, uh, uh, or the wide road, life or death. I, you know, it, you know no, matter what it, no matter what the choice is, it is life or death. Death, and so we thank God we we've been in this thing, and 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 I don't know about you, but I've made a conscious choice to choose life. I I, I don't care what else is going on. I want life. I want abundant life. And so we, we know in Deuteronomy 30 and 19 it says, "Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses." That that that, that that's the piece right there. That's what I just said. There's a there's a choice: life and death, blessings and curses. And then he said, "Oh, that you would choose life." Look at look at verse twenty. He said, "You make this choice by some of y'all. Some of y'all is in your sleep. I hear you saying it now. You're not gonna get away from it no more." It says, "Loving the Lord your God, obeying Him, and committing yourself firmly to Him, being totally committed to God. It's in you right now because you've heard it so much. Because you're beginning to understand what it what it what it means. It's the key to life." Love God, obey God, be totally committed to God. Regardless of what's, what's going on, I don't care. I'm, I'm not going to be totally committed to the job. I'm not going to be totally committed to my check. I'm not going to be totally committed to money. I'm not going Because all that could disappear. But, but my relationship with God, that ain't going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. I'm, I'm going to love him. I'm going to obey him. I'm going to be totally committed to him. And then I'm going to let the chips fall where they may. And God said he'll never leave me or forsake me. The Bible says I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. So, 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 so I'm in good company when, 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 I, when I'm totally committed to God. I, I have God's promise. Ooh, you better tell somebody I got God's promise. I got, God, I got God's promise. I don't know what you have. I don't know what the promises that you have. I don't know the promises that this world has given you. But I have God's promise. Hallelujah. That, that, that if I love him and, 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 and I obey him and I'm totally committed to him, I will be blessed. Ooh, thank you. I, look, God, God, God is not a man that he should lie. I put faith, I put trust in that word. Hallelujah. And you should too. You should too. So, so, so everything God does in the Old Testament is to accomplish this purpose. To love him, to obey him, and to be totally committed uh, uh, to him. And then when we went to the New Testament, we saw that, that Jesus is the only way that God's word can work for you. It's the only way that God's word for, can work for you. Why? Because he's the living, he's the living, the breathing word of God. He is the word of God, hallelujah. And the word of God is there to assist you when you choose life. It's there to assist me when I choose life. It's there to assist us when we choose life. Jesus is there, the word of God is there to assist us when we choose life. So, so, so we accomplish the will of God through the word of God to fulfill the purpose of that God intended. We accomplish the will of God through the word of God to accomplish the purpose of God, the purpose God intended. And so when we look at that, when we look at that Deuteronomy, you've got to have a new way of looking. It's like, you know, when people see a uh, 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 math problems and they automatically see the answer before, you know, because they just see it, because they know the formula, then they see it, you know? You, you can see the plus sign, you can see the multiplication sign, you see the two numbers, Boom, the answer comes. Why? Because you know the formula. You know how to do it. And so now, the, 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 the formula, you know the formula, and so the answer should come. The will of God is for us to choose life. God has always wanted us to choose life. No matter what he's done, he's wanted us to choose life. Choose life. Look, I, that's what I want you to do. I want you to choose life. Not only just life, abundant life. That's what my son came to give you, abundant life. And then the word of God is there to explain to assist, and then to remind us of what his will is. If, if you look at the word, that's all it does. It just uh, explains, assists, and then it reminds us of what his word is, and, and he wants us to choose life. And, and then the purpose, of course, of why we do it, and why the word is there to, you know, to, to help us understand it, is so that, hallelujah, we could love him, obey him, and be told it. That's, that's God's purpose. That's what, that's what he wants from his people. That's what he wants from his children. And if you want his children, that's the purpose. 
that, 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 that's our purpose. That's our goal. That's the purpose of the word of God. That's God's purpose. That's what he wants out of each and every one of us. Woo, thank you, Jesus. And so we got to understand something about God, though. God, God does not change. And some of y'all going, some of y'all eyebrows going to go up a little bit on me when I say this. I know this. I know you. I know y'all. I know, I know some of y'all. But, and when I say the word will, well, the word of God will adjust to accomplish God's will and fulfill his purpose. The word of God will adjust. The word of God is going to make, make some adjustments throughout the, throughout the Bible. The word of God makes adjustments, but the adjustments are to accomplish God's will and fulfill his purpose. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to understand that. I know those of you with your eyes up, those of you that's looking a little funny right now because of what I just said. Oh, the, Bible, the word don't change. The word don't, just, just listen to what I'm saying. Just, just understand what I'm saying. Look at, look at John 14 and 6. Yeah, we, yeah, this is one we're going to stay on because it just continues to talk to me. And if it talks to me, I'm going to tell you what it say. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, um, look, at, look at it. It says, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. That was an adjustment. That, 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 that wasn't in the Old Testament. That was that, 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 Jesus wasn't there saying that everything is going to flow through me. That's an adjustment from the Old Testament. That's that, 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 that was a change in the word of God. All access is good from the Father is now going through me. That's Jesus talking. And, 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 and that wasn't in Old So that's an adjustment in the word. When you read that word, it's an adjustment from what was happening in the Old Testament. So don't tell me the word of God don't make adjustments because it just did. So throughout the New Testament, Jesus walked in the purpose. Love God, obey God, totally committed to God. Remember, Jesus always said, I come to do the will of the Father. That's total commitment. That's total commitment. See, the thing is, some, some of y'all wonder when we're going to get back to church. What you should be wondering is, how can I do the will of the Father? How can I do the will of the Father? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Stop worrying about coming back to church on Sunday. Do the will of the Father throughout the week. God's going to take care of his. You take, you, but you take, care, you take care of what he wants you to do for the, in, in his will, for you, for you to do. That's what I'm trying to say. You do what you're supposed to do. You do what Jesus said. Jesus said, I come to do the will of the Father. Why you, what are you doing? Well, praise the Lord, amen, amen. And so, and so Jesus showed us that in order to fulfill the purpose of the 633, 613 laws, because the 613 laws was there to fulfill the purpose, right? What was the purpose? Love me, obey me, and be totally committed to me. So the 613, every time they was told to do something, they was doing it to show their love for God, to show their obedience to God, to show their commitment to God. And so, you know, it just, it just started piling on more and more and more and more. But, but, but Jesus said, you know, you know, in order for us to accomplish that, without having to follow these laws, he said man needed an abundance of love in order to live without the law. Man needed an abundance of love in order to live without the law. If you have an abundance of love, you can live without the law. If you don't have an abundance of love, you, you, you need to go back in the Old Testament and find out that all of them 613 and you need to be trying to do them. Because if you don't have the love, you don't have an abundance of love, then you need the law. But if you, if you have an abundance of love, you don't need the law. And so that's how, that's how it works. And, and that's why, you know, when you start thinking about the word of God, when it starts talking about love, and it starts talking about the, ne the necessity of love and what you have to have, and if you love me, keep my commandment, and God is love, and, and you, you, you begin to understand that if you have an abundance of love, that's why you don't need the law. And if you don't, if you're walking around mean, looking like you sucked on a lemon or a lime, and, and you always got an attitude, you, you need the law. Because you don't have no love. Yeah. See, so you can't, you, there's no such, thing, no such thing as a mean Christian. There's no such thing that a Christian with a bad attitude. Now, I ain't saying you can't have a bad day, but I'm talking about you can't have no bad day for no year. You know, you can't, you can't, you know, you, you can't be known for your bad day. So, 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 so that, that, those are oxymorons. Those don't, need, those don't go together because Christianity, one of the founding principles is love. It's love. 
And so you can't have one without the other. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. So, so Jesus didn't leave us. He didn't leave us, hallelujah, uh, uh, from this earth because he, he never left us. He's still with us. But he didn't, he, he didn't leave this earth without until he empowered man to walk in the purpose of God on his own. Man was walking in the purpose of God with Jesus, but then he empowered man so that man could walk in the purpose of God on his own. We could love God, obey God, and be totally committed to God on our own. We, we, we didn't have to get the Spirit from Jesus. We, the Spirit came and, 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 and filled, filled us up. Fill me up. Fill me. That's the, that's, see, the thing is, y'all, you know, that, that's why you got to understand some songs. When, when you understand when, when that particular song is talking about filling us up, well, hallelujah, with the Spirit of God. And the reason why we need to be filled up, because we need that love. We need that power, because it takes power to love people who don't love you back. It takes power to love people uh, uh, in, in, in a world that, that, that is always trying to stab you in the back or get something over on you. But you have to love them in spite of. You can't mute. We, there's, the world will never love everybody. The, the world will never be, this will never be a loving world. We just need to get that out of our, our minds. We just get that out of your head. This world will never be a loving world. But we can, we can bring love into the world. You remember, we're, we're, we're in it, but we're not of it. We, we're in it with love. We're not of it with what they have. We, we, so, so, so we're in it with love. So you bring, you bring love to the situation. You know, wherever, oh, thank you, Lord. Wherever you come, wherever you go, you're supposed to bring love to the situation. And, and you know, I, I'm not talking about what the world, the world called love, you know, I get, I get stepped on and I get walked over and I get, no, no, no. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about, I bring the power of, of, of love. I bring the real love. I bring the real deal. I bring what the world can't understand. I bring, I bring Jesus. I bring, I, you know, I bring the knowledge of the truth. I bring, I bring understanding. Hallelujah. I, I, I bring, I, I, I bring in your salvation. Hallelujah. Letting you know who your savior is. Ooh, thank you. That's love. That's love, hallelujah. Me, me walking around, letting you do whatever you want to do because you, I love you and I don't want to hurt your feelings and, 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 and it's all, and, and like I'm okay if you go to hell. No, that ain't no love. That ain't love. That, that's worldly love, but in the kingdom of God, that's hate. You hate your brother. You hate your sister when you, when you don't tell them about Jesus. You hate your family when you just allow them to be like they are. You just be like, oh, well, that's, that's who they are. That's, that's what they no, no, you don't do that in front of me because I love you too much to let you do that in front of me. Ooh, come on, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a amen moment right there. That, that's, that's, that's amen. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's look. Let's look. Like he ain't leaving. Look, look. Galatians 5 and 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, meekness. But, but, but it's love. That's the fruit of the spirit. That's, 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 that's the number one category that, 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 that went first. It's love. And then it said in 1 Timothy 1 and 7, 2 Timothy, I'm sorry, 1 and 7. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And of a sound mind. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but He gave us a spirit. And we gave us a spirit that has power. Gave us a spirit that has love. Gave us a spirit that has that, that gives me a sound mind. Thank you, Jesus. Tell me the Bible didn't deal with everything. The Bible dealt with depression. Why? Because a sound mind comes from the Spirit of God. You know, what do we, what do we, what do, we do to a Christian that, that has some mental problems? That, we, we keep feeding them Jesus. We keep, we, keep, we, we keep getting them to understand you need to be filled with the Spirit. Because the Spirit gives you a sound mind. Hallelujah. There's a reason that was put there. Sound mind. Hallelujah. That deals with that. anything mental, Holy Spirit can handle. That's a word from heaven right there. That's for, that's for somebody. I don't know who it's for, but that's for some. Anything mental, Holy Spirit can handle. That's why, that's why the devil won't want folks to believe that you don't need the Holy Spirit. You don't, you don't, you don't need the Spirit. The Spirit is not for everybody. That's just for the Pentecostals. That's, that's for the holiness. That's not for everybody. No, that's a, that's a lie from hell. He wants you to believe that because, see, because with the Spirit comes power of love, power of, uh, uh, spirit of power, spirit of love, and spirit of a sound mind. Walking around talking about you don't need the Holy Spirit. So God gave us a, he, but, he, but he gave us this spirit of love to accomplish the purpose of the law. 
If you have love, you can accomplish the law. Hallelujah. Spirit of love needs to be the dominating influence in our lives because we, 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 we defeat the need for the law when we have love. We need to choose the spirit of love. Choose the spirit of love to walk in it and live by it. I want to walk in it and I want to live by it. Let me show you something. Let me show you. Let me, I, I, I need you to see this because, see, the thing is, Jesus didn't just come here, you know, uh, uh, you know and just and say some things. See, he came here to be an example of who we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to live. And then, you know, he, he chose the, the, the ones that he had with him, with them. But not only did he choose them, he, he, he began to help them see uh, uh, how they were supposed to walk in this love. I want you to see them. Look at, look at John. Let me start. Look at Luke 9, 49 to 50. Luke chapter 9, verses 49 to 50. The Bible says, John said to Jesus, Master, he said to Jesus, Master, we saw someone using your name to cast out demons. But we told him to stop because he isn't in our group. But Jesus said, don't stop, don't, don't stop him. Anyone who is not against you is for you. Anyone who is not against you is for you. Now y'all get that, because you know, because Jesus is explaining, because I don't know, if, I, if, that was, if that was me, you know, in today's, I have my little notebook, and I said, okay, all right, Jesus said, I'm trying to write down everything. And see, that, 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 that's a mistake, just because I'm not saying you're supposed to do that. You know, if they're not against me, then they for me, right? So I, I'm writing that down. But Jesus is like, no, I don't want you, I don't want you to get another law. I want you to get another law because, see, I want you to understand what I'm trying. I want you to feel this thing so that you can, because so, it's moving parts. It's moving parts. Everybody's a, everybody want to know. Tell me what I can't do. Tell me what. No, no, no. no you didn't understand the why. You need to begin to understand the principles behind it. You, I mean, if you understand love, love you know, you know what Jesus said, love, love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, well. A million things can, can be put into those two categories if you just apply those things to, to, to it. So, 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 so then, I mean, what, 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 can we, what can we apply to that one? We can apply love your neighbor as yourself. Look, he, it, it's, he, said, he said that we saw somebody using your name to cast out demons. He didn't say we saw somebody trying to do it. He said he saw somebody doing it. So that means they believed in Jesus and they, and, 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 and they didn't like the demons and they was casting them out. That's, that's, some, that's something good about that person. That's somebody, you, 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 you should be okay with that person. Just because they ain't with you, just because they ain't at your church, just because they don't, they don't serve with you and, 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 and ain't in your denomination, you want to, you want to nah, I stopped them because they not with us. Man, get them on, get out of it. Jesus like, it's bigger than you. And it's bigger than this little group that we in. And that's what God is trying to tell us right now. It's bigger than the church you going to. It's bigger than that. Hallelujah. Your, your mission and your witness is bigger than that. Some of us, some of us was just, you know, you was just on your best behavior when you came to church. Now when you're on your best behavior. When you're on your best behavior, it should be all the time. Oh, but I got to get, oh, I don't cuss, I don't, I'm put some dentin, or put some peppermint on, I don't want people to smell the smoke on my hands. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't put some cologne and chewing gum, I don't want to smell the alcohol. You're on your best behavior coming to church. Now, your best behavior should be when you're not in church. Oh, well, okay. Say, oh, me, if you can't say amen. I ain't only me, oh, my, I'll pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, so we got to understand. So this, this, I, I love this particular scripture in, in, in 1 John, 1 John 1 and 2. It, it begins to let us know because it, it says, you know, you, you try to spirit by the spirit. It says, it's dear friends, do not believe everyone who, who claims to speak by the spirit. You, you must test them and see if the spirit they have come from God. So there's a way that you can test that people's spirit comes from God. It says, for there are many false prophets in the world. And this is how we know if they have the spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus came in a real body, which means that the son of God came in the flesh, that the word became flesh, that person has the spirit of God. 
And, and think about how many people are out there now talking about how Jesus, you know, I, I believe in the Bible. I believe that Jesus was just a prophet, just like this one, that one, and that. See, they won't, they, they, you, you can tell, you can test the spirit. If they refuse to talk about Jesus, if they're always talking about the Old Testament, if they always, and they're not talking about Jesus, Jesus is not their focal point, and they don't believe in who he is, that's how you know who they are. Because they can't, they can't lie having the spirit. You can't lie to have the spirit. I said, I'm just telling you the word of God. I'm just telling you what the word says. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So, now, so, so, so in the passage in Luke, because I want to take you back to Luke. I want to take you back to Luke. I want to take you back to Luke. Go back to Luke. Go back to Luke. Hallelujah. Um, Jesus just told them, don't, don't deny them. Don't, you know, if, they, if they're not against us, they're for us, right? So right after that, then they, then, then they got an assignment. It says, now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up. Thank you, Jesus. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans. To prepare for him. Thank you, Jesus. So it says, and, and he sent messages for his face, and they went and they entered the village to prepare for him. Now look, Jesus sent messengers. He sent, he, you, know, he, you know, he just got through talking to them. Then he, then he going to send, send messengers to prepare the way. It's time for me to go to Jerusalem. I want you to prepare the way. I want you to prepare the hearts and minds of the people. I want you to tell them a little bit about me. Uh, and, you know, let them know that I'm that, that we're coming. And so uh, um, he says uh, um, in verse 53, it says, but they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. He looked as though he was going, his face looked like he was on his way to Jerusalem. His face looked like he was on his way to Jerusalem. I mean, he looked like a Jewish person on their way to Jerusalem. And so where they was going, they didn't like the Jews. And so the Samaritans didn't receive him. They, they, they didn't, re now understand something. They didn't receive him as a Jew, not as the son of God. I know he was both, but they wasn't looking at whether or not what his deity was. They was looking at whether that he was a Jew, and they didn't like the Jews. They didn't even get to the point of him being the son of God. They just didn't want to receive him because, man, y'all uppity, y'all, you know, I, I don't like y'all. They sinners, they, 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 you know, that's what sinners do, you know, and, and, and so they, they rejected the arrogance of Jewish people. So if people are not accepting Jesus when you present him, they may not be rejecting Jesus, they may be rejecting you. It may not be Jesus who they're rejecting, they, they, they may be rejecting, they may be rejecting you, they may be rejecting the church, they may have been hurt in the church. So you can't take a person, they, you know, because sometimes when people aren't, re aren't receiving Jesus from you, it could have been something you did to them. It could have been, it, it could have been the way you presented it. It could have been, like I said, it could have been their experience or, or just what they've heard about the church. But, but, but you've got to understand what the purpose is. You've got to understand why you're there. And so look. Look at verse 54. Verse 54 says this. It says, and, and when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know the, what manner of spirit you are of. You don't know the manner of spirit that you are of. Now understand something. Remember we said, I, you know, because you, you got to understand what we're talking about. We're talking about, I, I want to choose the Holy Spirit. Why do I need the Holy Spirit? Because I need an abundance of love. Why do I need an abundance of love? Because without an abundance of love, I'm stuck with 613 laws that I need to try to apply to my life. But if, if I have an abundance of love that comes from the Holy Spirit, I don't need them. Now you got to understand something. You, you, you got to understand something. He said, you don't know what manner of spirit you are of. Well, what, what was they saying? Hallelujah. They, they, they said, I can't, let's bomb them. 
Let's let, 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 let some fire come down on them, you know. How dare they not accept Jesus? How dare, how dare you don't receive him as your Lord and Savior? I, gave, I, I just gave a wonderful invitation to Christ, and, and you said, no, I, go to hell. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, burn in hell then. You know, you don't want Jesus burning hell. I mean, you know, that's the same as fire coming down. You want him to go down to fire? And Jesus, Jesus said, hey, hey, when you operating in something, <laughs> you operating in something, because that ain't the manner of spirit that you are of. Yeah, or, or you don't know the manner of spirit you are of. That's what it is. You don't know the manner of spirit of, that you are of. And so he had to, he had to let them know. And, 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 and the reason why he knew that they weren't of the right spirit or they, they you know, they, they, they weren't of the right spirit, that they had the manner of a spirit that they wasn't supposed to have because of what they was, wanted Jesus to do or what they wanted to do to other people. See, your actions dictate what spirit you are a manner of. Yeah, I, 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 I'm still with the Holy Spirit. I'm still, your actions don't, your actions, you know, you just cut somebody out. That wasn't the spirit, Holy Spirit, that's spirit of cuss. You just slap somebody, that's spirit of slap. Right? Whatever spirit, but, but Holy Spirit ain't connected to that. So you got to understand something. When you, when you allow yourself to in, indulge in different things, you know, that, that ain't Holy Spirit. You know, the fornication, adultery, that ain't Holy Spirit. That ain't the amount of spirit you are of. And so you got to understand something, that these are some people that's walking and talking with Jesus, and Jesus had to say, hey, hey, hold on. You, you didn't let the wrong spirit hitchhike. That ain't the man of spirit. You, 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 don't, you don't know the man of spirit that you are. That ain't the spirit you should be of. Oh, oh, all right, all right. Because it gave a clear understanding of, of the spirit that they, they were of. You got to understand that. What's the spirit? A spirit is something uh, that is a divine, inspiring, or animating influence. That's why, that's why people call alcohol a spirit. You know, they say, oh, I got a bit of the spirits. Why? Why? Because it, it's animating. It makes you do things that, that you wouldn't normally do, make you say things you wouldn't normally say. You know, it's, it, you know, it's, it's a spirit. All kinds of, there's all kinds of animating spirits. I don't have time to go over all of the spirits in the Bible, but understand that there are all kinds of spirits in the Bible, and they all want to jump on you, and they all will if you allow them to. Because, 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 because the Holy Spirit it, it has a way that you're supposed to be. It's called fruit of the Spirit. And number one thing is love. And so anytime you stop, start operating outside of those things, then those other spirits say, oh, hey, hang on, hang on, let me jump on, let me jump on. They jump on. Because you, you kick the Holy Spirit off when you want to operate in other spirits. So understand, you know, they're they, they coming. You know, but if, if, if there is no vacancy, they can't come in. But if you allow for a vacancy... And you just allow for the vacancy by wanting to do something. The Holy Spirit said, oh, no, no, that ain't got nothing to do with love, joy, peace, long-suffering. That, that ain't got nothing to do with all. That ain't got nothing to do with none of what I'm about. So if you want to do that, see ya. Pack his bags. Be like, call me. And now you got a vacancy. And you can let all the mother spirits in if you want. You know, I, there, there's some Christians that, that, you know, they I'll cuss a sailor. But they ain't doing it with the Holy Spirit. And see, the, the bad thing about that is that when, when, when the Holy Spirit is gone and you allow these other spirits in you, then, then it can take you farther than you want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay. Make you do more than you wanted to do. And now you're stuck with, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Holy Spirit looking at you, it's like, yeah, you are, you are sorry. You are so sorry. Because you should have kept me. Because I wouldn't, I, I, I had power for you to, to keep you from doing that. But you didn't want me. You wanted, you wanted to do what you wanted to do. So these other spirits jumped on. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So, the, so that, that manner, that manner is a dominant behavior. It's a, it's a dominant con, a conduct, and it is the way. Remember Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But, but that manner is the way of the spirit that you are of. And of course, Jesus, Jesus and the Holy Spirit and, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they are one. So his way is the, is the way of the Holy Spirit. His way is love. I am the way, the truth, and the life. His way is love. 
If you go any other way than love, then you ain't going the way of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Look at look, 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 Luke 8 and 2. Luke 8 and 2 said, look, because there's a, there's a behavior and conduct that is directly related to the spirit that we are of. Look at Luke 8 and 2. It says, a certain woman which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, who, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. She had seven devils. Jesus had to cast, her, cast out of her. Called them, called them spirits. You know, so, so understand, it's real. It's real, and they want to get in you. And, you know, and they ain't afraid to come back with, you know, two, three, four, five. They don't, they, 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 they don't care. But see, the thing is, if you keep yourself filled with the Holy Spirit, if you keep yourself uh, uh, thinking about love and doing things that are right in the sight of God, you won't have to worry about that. Look at this, look at this. And so, the, so, so look, the conduct and behavior that we display must be in tune with the Spirit of God, the Spirit of love. The conduct and behavior we display must be based on spiritual influence, right? And so it's, it's, it's that influence of love. So the spirit that seeks revenge and destruction on your enemies is not the manner of spirit that you're supposed to be of. If you're thinking about, well, they, they shouldn't have done that to me, so I'm going to do that to them, and I'm going to get them back, that's not the spirit you should be of. And the Holy Spirit is not going to have you doing that. So you should recognize any time you want to do something that's wrong to your neighbor, that's want to get them. I don't care if they did something to you, but if you want to do something that's wrong to them, then that's not the spirit you should be of. And that's not the spirit of God. And you headed down the wrong path. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Because re re look, rejection is not a reason to retaliate. And, 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 and people who give negative responses or, have, or, 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 or live by negative responses, they need the law. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit. I mean, those are, negative, those are negative things that you do. You need the law. You need the law to tell you not to do that. Because if you live by love, you will know, I, I can't do that. That's going to hurt somebody. I can't take what they have. I can't kill somebody. That's gonna, that, that's a, that ain't loving my neighbor. I can't do that. But if you're somebody that live by negative responses, if you always, you got to fly off the mouth. You got you to do this. You got to strike back. You always got to, you always got, you know, you, you, your mouth is always a knife. It's always a dagger. You always got, that's not of, that's not of the Holy Spirit. It's not of the Holy Spirit. Look at Luke, Luke 9 and 56, where the guy said this. He said, Jesus said, look, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives but to save them. And then they just went on to another village. I mean, Jesus was like, okay, look, we ain't really gonna talk about this long. What you're doing, that's wrong. I didn't come for that. I didn't come to settle your, your disputes. I don't care, you know, I, you know we, we gotta stop trying to use prayer to get revenge on people. Lord, you get them. Lord, you do, give them what they deserve. Lord, they, God said, look, vengeance is mine. Maybe, I, maybe, I, maybe they won't get what you think they deserve. Maybe I'll put them in a position that they need to do some hard work for me. You don't know what, you know, look, 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 look what happened to Paul. Paul, man, look, he killing Christians. But what God, Jesus put him in a position that he needed to go places that nobody else would go, nobody else wanted to go, got bit by a snake, almost drowned, you know, went to, put in prison, put in jail. I mean, you know, I, I believe he, he, he got what was coming to him. But he did it God's way. He didn't do it your way. He didn't do it. The, he didn't do it the Christian's way. I mean, God said, "Look, my way is better because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get what I want, and He gonna also get what He deserves." But you, you can't dictate to me what. Lord, burn them up. Lord, call down fire on them. Come on, and that's not love. That's not love. Hallelujah. So what you, what you seek to do and how you respond in any situation as you're going through this, uh, 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 you know, as you're going through this hard time, are you responding like a Christian? Are you responding like somebody filled with the Holy Spirit? I mean, you got to ask yourself, I mean, is, is that my response? You know, because what you seek to do and how you respond is a reflection of the Spirit that is in you. And, 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 and not only that, it's the spirit that's in you, that's your motivation. If the Holy Spirit is in you, your motivation is love. How can I be more loving? How can I show you that I, that, 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 that I love you? 
But if it's not the Holy Spirit, the number one thing is selfishness. I can't do this, and I can't do this, and I can't have this, and I can't. And it's, it's all on you. Well, guess what? The whole world came. But you have something more powerful in you than the rest of the world. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. And you have love of God in you. We don't worry about what's, we don't worry about what's, what, 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 what's in it for me. We worry about what can I do for others? What can I do for God? What can I do to love God, Lord God, with all my heart, mind, and soul? What can I do to love my neighbor as myself? Get the focus off of you. You ain't that important. Love builds up and restores. It don't tear down. It don't tear down. Love, if you love me, you would do this. If you love me, no, love doesn't tear down. Love's build up. Builds up. Look at this, look at this, Matthew 5, 40, 43 to 48. The word of God said, I heard, you have heard that the law says that love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say love your enemies. Pray for, for those who persecute you. And, and, and that way you will be acting as true. Not fake. Not false. Not Sunday only. But you will be acting like true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives you his sunlight to both the evil and the good. So if he loves the evil just like he loves the good, you can't say nothing. It says he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. And so if you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? There's no reward for that. There's no reward for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said even corrupt tax collectors. They do that much. The love who love them and, and hate who hate them. Look, it says, if, if you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anybody else? Where's the love of God? You're just kind to your friends, but everybody else you don't give a second thought to. The world does that. It says, it says even pagans do that. But look at this, and here's for all those people who say, and there was only one perfect. There was only one, there's only one perfect is Jesus. Then why did the Bible say this? But you are to be perfect. Even as your father in heaven is perfect. That's, that, that, that's his goal for us. So anytime you're trying to use that old, 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 old tired excuses. Well, I'm trying, I'm doing my best, ain't nobody perfect. You better read your Bible. Because the reason you're saying that because you ain't read your Bible. I just gave you some scripture for that never to come out your mouth again. Anytime you even get that out your mouth, talking about, well, there ain't nobody. You, you better just shut up. Don't say it. Don't say it. Just read your Bible. Understand, th that's God's desire for you. That's God's desire for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And, 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 and I want you to understand something. Because there's some people that they will say, well, the Lord told me to say. And the Lord, you know, and, 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 and then out of their mouth will come something mean. Come something nasty. Come something, and they'll try to blame it on God. And I want you to show something. Because I know the Bible says anybody that lacks wisdom, ask of God. And he'll give it to you. So, so, so anybody that, that's saying that God has given them something, God is, God is never going to give you something to say that lacks wisdom. He's never going to give you something that lacks wisdom. So I want you to see something. I want you to, I want you to go to James. I want you to go to James chapter 3. And I want, you, I want you to look at this. I want you to understand this. I want, you to, I want you to see this. Because God will never give you something that's going to contradict his word. He's never going to give you something that will make you something contrary to who you're supposed to be. A loving Christian. Look at this, look at this. He says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. Then it's peace loving. It's considerate. It's submissive. It's full of mercy and good fruit. It's impartial and it's sincere. Peacemakers who's, who, who sow in peace 
raise a harvest of righteousness, of things that are in right standing with God. And so, and so your, your, your words, hallelujah, who you are, it has to be defined by love. It has to be defined by the spirit of love. It has to be defined by the Holy Spirit. And, and the thing about this is that you can be walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, and not know the manner of spirit you are of. Because you forget that the spirit that you're supposed to be of is a spirit of love. 